Hello everyone, Kyle here. Project returns or levered returns is a commonly misunderstood area in project finance modeling, specifically around misunderstanding the elements that build up the cash flows that are actually evaluated. So here is a video where we go through the mechanics in a project finance model. Okay, very good. So we've done the equity returns. Now let's do the project returns. What are project returns? Well, another word for these are unlevered returns or ungeared returns. So this is looking at the project on an unlevered basis, i.e. it doesn't have debt in it. Why might you be interested in this? Well, really because perhaps you'd like to compare projects irrespective of the financial engineering that's taken place, so irrespective of their capital structure. And then you can compare projects without the effect of debt coming into it. So you can compare projects kind of on an apples for apples basis. So how might we do that? Well, essentially you want all the returns, all the cash flows as if they didn't have debt in them. So from a corporate finance perspective, and they call this free cash flow to firm. So free cash flow to firm. So the cash flow to all firm holders. And that's quite similar to CFADs here. The only difference is, and we can't see it in here because we haven't calculated tax paid, but the key difference is that we are stripping out all of the effects of debt. And one of the effects of debt is within the tax paid because you get an interest uh, shield for taxed. So you have to essentially recalculate your tax as if you didn't have the interest in it, as if you didn't have the debt. Again, we don't have tax here, but let's see what the categories would be. So we have revenues, we have OPEX. We should adjust for the accrual to the cash basis. Of course, we have construction costs. However, if you think about the construction costs, these should not include interest during construction. They should not include financing fees. Why? Well, because we're assuming that there's no debt in this project. That's how we're calculating the returns. So I'm going to link these in from the cash flow waterfall. So here's my revenues. Copy across. Go for my OPEX down here. And net working capital I just saw was in 22. You can just check that. Construction costs excluding financing. I don't even need to actually include the negative here. So these are the sum of these essentially. So I'll just put a sum around that. Now you would have seen our excluded IDC excluding financing fees. Just format these. What else? Well, as we come down the waterfall, tax paid. So tax paid, however, this is on an ungeared basis, i.e. no financing assumed. And unfortunately, we haven't done that calculation, so that's empty. And that's pretty much it. So let me sum that up. And pretty much just the same here. So we get our evaluation cash flows so that we can essentially have no number here. So I'm going to put in a small number equals minus small number. Fine. And let's see, we need a project discount rate. So do we have that? No, we don't. So let's assume that our project discount rate, the discount rate for the project as a whole is 7%. Oops, 7%. And 
and XMPV, X, XRR. So doing the same stuff as we did before. So here's the rate, here's my values, and here's my dates. So it's saying that this project, if you look across what these projects generally earn in terms of rate of return, and this, once again, independent of how you've actually financially structured this, independent of how much debt you've put in, then this is a very good investment. And working out what the project discount rate would have to be for us to be ambivalent between this project and another one would have to be 11%. So pretty high again. Depending on the jurisdiction, not so high if this was in a kind of high risk country. And that's because your risks need to be commensurate with your return. So if your risks go up in a, a high risk country, then the returns need to go up. So that's really it on the equity tab, just finishing this off. And now that we've done the returns, we're pretty much ready to do the scenario manager and essentially link through all the key returns that the stakeholders will want to see. Those being these metrics, these metrics, and of course, your debt metrics here. So we'll link these in because these are the stakeholders that are really, really interested in what's happening with the project. In summary, you learn that we might be restricted from distributing by retained earnings and lockup. You finished off the cash flow waterfall. You learned about the time value of money and the NPV and IRR. You used the functions XNPV and XIRR, and you modeled equity returns and project returns.